Hi guys, welcome to Monocure 3D Pro Tips. My name is Charlie. Today we're going to check out this latest offering from Crowdy. It's the LD006. Now interestingly, they've dropped the R and the H from the title. I guess it's pretty simple why. They're not going to uh, go with anything other than monochrome screens from now on. Anyway, let's check this one out. Interestingly box this one, they've um, taped it up with a lot of tape. It would have taken someone quite some time to do this. As per usual, I haven't been given this. I paid for it. This is a proper review and unboxing. And after we have a quick look at it here, we'll get it downstairs to John and John can take it through its paces downstairs. I'm just going to take this off for now. Oh, this is the, um, the FET film that comes with it. Mm, this is an interesting one. I haven't seen one of these before, not for a long time the VAT cover. So here we go. This is where we've got the instructions and all the bits and pieces, the certificate, gloves, brush, scrapers, all the normal things. Gloves there. SD card. We always recommend that you use these if you have to, but change them out for something decent. The ones that come with these printers usually don't last very long and they can be a bit unreliable. The filters, you know that we love these and a set of the Allen keys. The plastic scraper, great for inside the vat. After sales service card, the user manual there. The calibration card, oh, okay. So that's to put under the screen, all right. That's an interesting one. A few of them are doing that now. And of course, their little quality certificate. Aussie plug, when you order from China that you still get the Australian uh, plug. Okay, so I think that's it for now. It certainly looks the part. The first thing I've noticed is that it is a little bit different from the other printers that we've unboxed here. Is it has this, I guess, this U-shape that goes around the double Z rails, which, you know, I guess could protect it from dust. And also it's got this cap on here. If this is not quite straight, it doesn't really matter because obviously the straightness has been guided by these two very, very solid Z rails here and nothing to do with, with this lead screw. That's just literally getting it up and down. So this is interesting. This is the first time I've seen this. This is the build plate is actually intact and attached in the printer and sent like that. Normally you'd find it in one of these foam sections, sort of protected. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, I mean look, it is right down and it is pushing against it, but I don't really like the idea of it pushing on the LCD screen while you know, it's in transit. Maybe that's just me, it's not something you see very often, but I'd prefer to see that you know, somewhere else, that build plate, and not pushing down on the screen. Uh, wouldn't take much for that to um, do some damage to the LCD. So anyway, I'm sure it's fine, but we'll, uh, we'll have another look at that. Quick look around the printer, all looks pretty normal. On off switch, like the smaller ones, like the LD002H and the uh, R, the color version. Have a look down here, if you can see here, you've got this, this L and this R, and I guess that's so you put it on the right way round. It's an interesting way to do it. The VAT's got some um, things in there showing you uh, the level of how much got actually in millimetres, not just a mark there, which is quite good. This side, you've got your Ethernet, which obviously means it will connect to the network and a USB. And then there, that's a standard kettle cable connection there and cooling fan there, and just your general information stickers there. So these things are pretty simple. There's not a lot to them. The most important thing is how it actually prints. XY axis resolution is 3840 by 2400 at 50 UM. The Z axis precision is 0.01 millimeter to 0.1 millimeter. So that's 10 microns to 100 microns if you want to look at it like that. The print speed is one to four seconds a layer. Now that depends on the resin you're using, but I guess they give you a bit of a guide. The light source configuration is a UV integrated light with a wavelength of 405, like all of them, most of them I should say. The print size, 192 by 120 by 250. That's the length, width and height. And the machine size is 325 by 290 by 500. The machine weights 13.5 kilos. Anyway, I think the best thing to do now is let's get this downstairs to John. He can have a good look at it, check it out, set it up, and we can go from there. Thanks, Charlie. Well, I've had uh, about two weeks now to play around with the LD006. I am a bit of a fanboy for the Creality uh, resin printers, and it looks like what they've done with this machine is they've listened to the community and they've improved on issues they've had with their smaller machines. It just looks like big brother to the uh, LD002 range of printers, but there's some fundamental differences here that we need to have a look at. It's big, <laughs> that's the first thing. 
We have an 8.9 inch monochrome screen that is probably the same screen that you've got sitting in the guts of your Anycubic Mono X and probably the EPAX E10 and the Sonic Mighty 4K sitting over there that which we'll have a little look at later on. The VAT, nice design, it's made of metal. It's got uh, an increased volume here for the upper level and a slightly inset area at the bottom there. And I guess the reason they've done that is that you can put a smaller amount of resin in there and when the, um, the plate lowers down into that, it doesn't come up too high because it spills over to the larger volume area that's at the top here. So you can, as you can see, put a litre of resin in there without any issues up to the max level. The other huge improvement, and I think this is where they have been listening to the community, is the ability to level this with little issues at all. There's no mucking around to make it work. It just works. It levels brilliantly. And I guess the main reason it levels so well is first of all, they've used split washers on the screws and the positions that these screws are placed is much further out to the edge of the plate, not right in the middle. So even if there was the slightest amount of nudge as I'm tightening the screw, because these connection points are further out to the corners, the difference it makes is very, very small. So I found it very easy to level this all plate once it was down, tightened up the screws, didn't have to do anything strange or wonderful. And the first prints that came off it were spot on. The distance was perfect, the, it looked perfectly level and everything was working on all four corners. So that's a good improvement. They've had to put an L and R at the top here, just so you know, not to put it around this way accidentally after you've leveled it, because that could be completely out of level, putting it on the wrong way. Uh, so then they've got that left and right on there. So you know, that's the direction it goes on and that's the way it stays. As you can see, we've put the wham-bam system on this plate. I didn't have exactly the right size wham-bam when I went searching for it, but the difference was like one, two millimetres by the looks of it. So the plate is slightly oversized and the uh, magnet that I've stuck on here, I've just sliced off that small amount of extra across the edge there just to make it completely even around the edge of the plate. And that pr helps prevent uh, any resin from seeping underneath the sticky side of the magnet. The plate goes straight on there. When I did put the plate on, because the plate is now thicker, I loosened off the screws and it went down and didn't quite have enough room to allow for that extra height. So I first of all looked at uh, reaming out the, um, the slots on the side plate here. That was a lot of effort. And the simpler method was simply just to get a piece of Mylar black tape and stick it on the um, edge of the interrupter here, the optical interrupter. So there's a little bit of Mylar tape on there and it just allows me to trip the sensor off a little bit earlier. And that gave me just enough room to level the plate. So that's a simple, easy fix, rather than mucking around with grabbing a Dremel and reaming out holes on, on a piece of steel. Possibly the only gripe would be at the corners at the top here, there's quite sharp pieces of metal. So you've got to be really, really careful lifting the lid off. If you tilt it forward slightly as you lift up, it's very easy to scratch the inside of the box using those corners, catching them on, on the corners there. But it's just a matter of being super careful when you lift it up. Uh, certainly on the other machines, you don't have a sharp edge on there. The Z-axis lead screw, very sturdy looking lead screw there. And hopefully the Z-axis stepper motor is equally as sturdy. It always pulls apart, even on the tightest of um, FEP jobs where it's struggling to rip off the FEP. It has no problems pulling that apart. All steel construction up the top there. You've got your steel vat, steel base. There's a lot of metal involved. I'll just pop the the vat off and we'll have a look at that. We've got two screws, which is great because you're not going to drop them in the, uh, in the vat accidentally. And if we have a look at the vat itself underneath, we've got a really nice uh, metal plate that holds the FEP in place. And it includes uh, little standoffs on each corner, which prevents you from accidentally scratching the surface, the underside of the FEP when you've got it sitting on the desk. So when it sits on the desk, it's raised off the surface and it's actually a really good way of checking to see if there's any holes by pouring in some water in there and just see if there's any leaks. As with all these monochrome screens, there's a black film that goes around the edge of it just to mask off any stray UV light. And there's also a polarizer that's stuck onto the surface of the glass. Once again, this is another machine that you probably would think about getting some sort of uh, screen protector to prevent any um, drips of resin getting in there in case you split the, uh, the FEP sheet. So that might be one option that we will probably look at down the track. Overall, a really good design. So, put the uh, vat back in place. 
and we'll have a look at the menu system on the front here. It looks absolutely identical to the menu system on the other Creality uh, printers. If we have a look in system, it just tells you what version of the firmware you're running on there. Uh, you can turn off the beeps if you want. A service will just give you information for contacting them and you can flip between English and Chinese. And Calibrate is really just for calibrating the touch screen. Under Tool, usual options moving the z-axis up and down and homing. You can do an exposure test just to see if the LCD is working fine. I'll just do a quick turn on of the lights inside the guts here just so you can see how the array is set up there. As you can see there's a lot of UV lights in an array with their own individual lenses and that gives a fairly consistent even spread of UV light across the build surface. There's a z equals zero option but as with all, all these Creality printers it just says that doesn't do anything. You have to do it by manually leveling the plate. Uh, stop just stops the z-axis and stops anything that's happening. Uh, clean, um, it's, it exposes the entire LCD screen just to um, cure any resin that's in the vat and allows you to peel it off. I actually used that the other day. It was quite useful. It allowed me to get all the drips and drabs that had gone hard on there that had broken off a model. And I just exposed a very thin amount of resin in there and it just peeled straight off and took it all off with it and it left me with a perfectly clean surface, which was quite good. Under print, same old thing. It'll just show me what's on the USB stick. Shall we try and print something? I think we should. What should we use? Crystal clear? Oh yes, we love our crystal clear. Well, I've got Chai 2 Box version 1.8.1. Uh, set up on my machine here. I've already dropped in my calibration print onto the plate there and under settings you'll see that we've added it to the list there because it has been added to version 1.8.1. You can see the resolution and the build volume there. So if it's any different on your end please make sure that you've got this set correctly. Under print, got it set up, we'll change it over to, well let's create a new profile. And we'll call it uh, M3D Crystal Clear. Save that. And there's crystal clear. I think we go at about 2.2 and 22 seconds. Uh, transition layer count six. That's good, that's good, that's good. Anti-aliasing, that's fine. All right, so then let's slice that. There's our sliced layers. So I'll grab the USB stick that came with the printer and we'll save it onto E drive in 3D calibration.ctb. Let's put it into the printer. Okay, here's our crystal clear. Um, I've already given it a shake a bit earlier, so that's good to go. And we're just going to fill it up to the lower level. Because we don't need a lot in there for the calibration. Go into print, select our calibration model, and go for it. You can hear those extractor fans going. We'll put the cover back on and we'll come back and check that in about, let's see, 16 minutes. Okay, our print job's finished. Have a little look underneath there. Yep, it's definitely on the plate. Let's remove our wham bam sure we've got all our PPE protection on our hands and face. There's our nice little model sitting on there, looks okay. Let's give it an initial bath in our dirty resin away over here. And I'm actually going to uh, clean and cure it while it's attached to the plate just to maintain its shape. And we'll stick it in our ultrasonic cleaner. Okay, that's done. Let's pull it out of the bath. It's looking pretty clean. So that looks like a nice clean print there. We can look at the detail there. We can see the tips are nice and clean and sharp. We're getting the CTRLV text. It doesn't look like it's filled in. A lot of the vertical tabs are still there. And the text looks uh, like it's not running into each other. Also the bridge looks very clean, which is nice as well. So that's worked quite well at 2.2 seconds on the LD006. Now I can certainly go ahead and put that in the curing station, but what I might do is just get the liquid off there because the cleaning solution might have a little bit of resin in it and that will go hard on that surface. So I'm gonna wash that off quickly with water. Okay, now that we've got all of the residue off the plate there and we've just got our model there, we're gonna stick it in the curing station. 
and I might give that about five minutes in our fast curing station. I'm just gonna pop this out early because we're dealing with crystal clear here and you want it to remain crystal clear. If you overexpose it or don't use a 405 nanometer light, um, it won't remain crystal clear. So we're just gonna stop it early, pop it out, and if you like, you can certainly put this out in the shade outside and let the, the muted sunlight cure it very slowly over time and you'll get the same results. But that's good enough to go now, just by giving you a, a quick bend, because that's the benefit of having a wham bam system, it comes straight off, and there's our finished model, nice and flat, and it looks pretty good. So on the old Anycubic uh, wash and cure stations, we noticed that there's two different UV lights, UV LEDs inside the back of that unit. One of them's 405, but then every alternate one is um, 365, which is not quite right. The 365 nanometer lights will cause the, the crystal clear to stop being crystal clear. You can modify them just by uh, 3D printing off Thingiverse, a cover that just covers up anything but the 405 nanometer, or upgrade to the new Anycubic wash and cure station that we've got in the back there, and it just has the 405 nanometer lights. The unit that we got, it came with the build plate all the way down and touching the surface of the FEP. It was actually shipped like that. And as a result, the top surface of the FEP had a little bit of scuffing on the um, corners there from where the build plate was touching the FEP surface. That wasn't great. It would have been great if there was a piece of foam between the build plate and the, uh, the FEP. The other thing is there is a network port on there but for the life of me, we can't work out how that works or if it does work. We had a look in the uh, chai Two box software and there is no option in there when you're saving the file to save it via network. It's probably a future upgrade in the firmware. For now, we can't make use of it. Overall, generally a really good printer, far more reliable leveling system on the plate here, and that's a big plus. And it's really well built. I think that's all we have to say about the new Creality printer. Back to you, Charlie, upstairs. Thanks a lot, John. There you have it, guys, the Creality LD006, an impressive looking machine. I'm sure John's looking forward to getting into that downstairs in the print lab. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, leave us comments below, but most importantly, remember to keep on 3D printing.